Our fellowship program is a very strong clinical cardiovascular program with great exposure to many different complex cardiovascular patients. Um, we really see the full gamut of patients that enter into our care with mild forms of chest pain all the way up through the most complex uh, heart failure patient requiring multiple devices or cardiac transplantation. The cardiovascular fellowship training has undergone some changes and there's some new COCATS guidelines that help prepare us for that future that we're going to adhere to very carefully. Within that, th those changes is going to be a foundation of echocardiography because that is clearly going to make you a stronger cardiologist across all other domains of education. But within this field, we have a strong electrophysiology group an incredible heart failure team with multiple devices that you will have experience with. We have a structural heart program, we have an advanced imaging program, and we have a phenomenal lengthy interventional cardiology program. So I think whatever you choose will be available to you. The reason I chose UK College of Medicine for cardiology fellowship actually changed throughout the process. I wasn't even considering applying. Um, but one of my co-residents um, came here for fellowship the year before and so he called me up and he's like you should really consider this place. When I got here I was really impressed with the clinical training that they had, the faculty mentors that they had, um, it's sort of a, a gem if you will in, in that regard. Some of the best teachers I've ever encountered have been here and I wouldn't have known about it. So the chief fellow role in our program is, is unique at least in my from my perspective of having served as the medicine chief resident for one year. The chief fellow here is obviously still a practicing um, f clinical fellow, um, but is also the liaison between the faculty and the fellows, and has a lot of responsibility that helps shape the program. Uh, we design the curriculum from an educational perspective, which includes two conferences every day, um, and we arrange the speakers, whether it be fellows or faculty, to provide those lectures. We also are responsible for creating the fellow schedule and to determine what fellow is serving in what clinical capacity each month throughout the year. So I think the main thing that makes our program attractive to applicants from any particular region in the country is the fact that it is flexible. Uh, we are able to shape the course of training to meet each individual's need, um, whether that be consideration of an advanced subspecialty after training or entering the workforce as a general cardiologist, we're able to shape the um, training uh, trajectory to meet those needs. So my career goals uh, beyond general fellowship is to do advanced imaging um, and I want to stay in an academic program and so I was very interested in getting a PhD. My biggest fear was the extra time it would take to get a PhD. I don't know that my family would have uh, appreciated me taking that extra time but Dr. Smythe and Dr. Sorrell have been very instrumental in formulating a plan for me moving forward to help me get my PhD without any additional time in training. So I will transition to a, into a faculty position with a significant amount of protected time to complete my PhD thesis. Not a lot of programs would have done that, so I really do appreciate their help with this. So our program traditionally has been a very clinically busy one. We all kind of realize on our first night on call what we've got ourselves into, um, which is scary at first, but I think one of the unique things here, again, refers back to the collegiality we have with our faculty. They are readily available to come assist and help us which does certainly ease the angst that one feels that first night of call, having to do an echo at the bedside at 3 a.m. to decide if a patient you potentially needs emergent surgery or not. First night on call, I remember getting the pager and it was challenging, um, very busy. You get calls right away from, from a lot of different areas and you're expected to handle a lot on your own. Well, what I was impressed by is the amount of faculty support I had. Um, Dr. Anaya was on call with me and uh, at two o'clock in the morning, I was having trouble with the procedure and I gave him a call and I was like, Dr. and I, I'm having trouble with this. I think we need this, this line in. Uh, would you be able to come in? And he was more than willing. He was like, oh, of course, definitely. I'll be right in. Within 20 minutes, he was in and we were taking care of these patients together. And so even though it was busy and even though it was challenging, I, I generally felt uh, supported throughout it. And as I've gotten further along, it's been uh, a nice balance of autonomy as well as uh, as support and so as I've needed less support and wanted more autonomy the faculty have been more than willing to provide it. Progression through training you know continues with that theme but has ultimately culminated in our experience as a third year fellow which I've had the opportunity to now do twice which is a rotation at our VA medical center here in Lexington. Um, the so-called VA senior rotation is one in which we essentially get to experience what life will be like as the independent cardiology consultant. So having done the four years of residency and the one year of chief um, 
here at UK before entering cardiology. I had obviously five years to examine this program um, quite closely, but also to interview elsewhere and consider where I wanted to do cardiology training. So I decided to stay here for really two main reasons. The first being I had examined the faculty here and their interactions both with their patients and their trainees for five years and in, noted really an, an intense degree of collegiality um, that was not necessarily afforded always to us as residents. So I felt like the fellows in this program were treated as equals by the faculty and I certainly still feel that way now having been a part of it for three years. So the second thing that made me decide to ultimately stay here for training was just simply the place. The people of Kentucky are wonderfully thankful for the care we provide them. There's no shortage of pathology, but also living in Lexington, I think, is a strong plus. It's not generally seen as that by those that are not from around here, but I think for those that come and give us uh, a chance and take a look, they'll find that Lexington for its smaller size actually has a lot to offer. Even I grew up in Cincinnati, only an hour and a half away, but I had never been to Lexington before my interview and so I was very nervous. Um, it's a smaller city, um, it's about a third to a quarter of the size of Cincinnati and, and Cleveland and so I didn't really know what to expect. I've been pleasantly surprised. It's a great town to live in, easy to get around and pretty much everything that you need. The fact that it's a college town makes up a lot for for the size of the city and it's been, uh, it's been a great experience throughout. Anything that I've wanted to do, I'm able to do. As the program director, I'm committed to making sure that the fellows achieve what their stated goals are. And along that line, we're going to create a number of selectives that will match up to the fellows' interests and goals. And I think the important message from me is that if you match at our program, you come to our program, you're going to have somebody behind you to make sure that you get where it is that you want to be, whatever that takes.